Welcome back. In the last tutorial, we covered the differences between job order costing and process costing, and we saw how the costs flow through work in process to finished goods. In this tutorial, I wanted to cover the production report, which is exclusive to process costing environments, and we're going to see how units and costs are tracked, summarized, and then reconciled in this report. And they're done periodically, usually once a month. So let's go ahead and cover this in five steps. So our first step is our physical flow schedule. And this tracks the, the unit flows from our work in process accounts. So we're gonna start off with our physical units in our BWIP account. And we're gonna see how many units are started for the month. And then we're going to reconcile this with our completed or transferred out units and our EWIP or count, our ending work in process. So after this, we're going to have our equivalent units, which is our second step. <clears throat> and equivalent units, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because in process costing, we're going to have multiple work in process accounts. And in the work in process accounts, the units aren't always going to be complete. There may be some incomplete units. For example, in the last tutorial I was talking about Coca-Cola. Uh, let's say that we are starting off in the first process stage and we're blending and mixing and we start off with our raw material, which is water, and we carbonate it, but we've yet to add the syrup. So this is an incomplete unit and we need to account for it, but we can't account for it as saying there are no units or that they're completed units. We must find what these incomplete units are equivalent to. So let me just write that down. What are incomplete units are equivalent to? Perfect. Next step is our cost per equivalent unit. So simply, we're going to take the cost that we've recorded uh, for like direct materials, uh, conversion costs, and we're gonna divide those by our equivalent units which we've calculated. So it's gonna look something like uh, total, total costs divided by uh, the amount of equivalent units. I wouldn't worry too much about this step right now because I'm going to be covering it in the next tutorial when we go through an Excel spreadsheet. Um, just know that uh, there's going to be a different cost per equivalent unit whether we use the weighted average method or the FIFO method. And the FIFO method, a little bit complicated, but don't worry, you've got me and it's going to be easy. So step four. We're gonna look at the cost of goods transferred, otherwise our finished goods, and our ending work in process uh, valuation. So once we know our cost per equivalent unit, we can multiply this by the amount of goods that we've completed to find our cost of goods transferred. And we can also find how many units are in our EWIP account, and we can multiply that by our cost per equivalent unit to find the valuation of those. So this step is to find the valuation of uh, the completed units, finished goods, and our EWIP accounts. Finally, our, we're gonna go through a cost reconciliation. So this is kind of like step number one in that we're going to be looking at the cost that we that we've uh, accumulated in our BWIP account, the costs that are associated with starting uh, those units, and then we're going to reconcile them with the costs to complete them and our ending work in process costs. And that's going to be your five steps to your production report. So in the next tutorial, we're going to go through an Excel spreadsheet. We're going to construct a production report and we're going to provide you with a full example to see how you can do this uh, for your academic purposes on a test or an exam. All right, see you guys then.